In this video, I'm going to show you how I turned my easiest focaccia recipe into an incredible homemade pizza. We'll make a few tweaks along the way, but don't worry. Those signature airy bubbles are still in the mix. I'll guide you step by step through every detail, showing you exactly how and when to prep your toppings. Yes, I even gave them a name. And how to mix and match flavors to create the most mind-blowing combos. By the end, you'll be serving up the authentic taste of an Italian pizzeria right in your own kitchen. Gourmet vibes guaranteed. But before getting started, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's start with the flour. Caputo Pizzeria needs no introduction. This flour has a protein content of 12.5 grams per 100 grams and a W factor of 260-270. If you can't find it, go for a medium strength bread or pizza flour with similar characteristics. In a small bowl, crumble 12 grams of fresh yeast or 4 grams of active dry yeast and add a bit of lukewarm water from the 370 grams you'll need in total. Stir to dissolve the yeast. Make a well in the center of the flour and gradually pour in the remaining water, mixing until it's absorbed. Then add the dissolved yeast and 2 tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Mix well until fully combined and the dough looks uniform. Cover the bowl and let it rest for 30 minutes. Next, add 2 teaspoons of salt. Mix it in using a spoon, folding the dough from the edges towards the center until the salt is fully absorbed. Then, with wet hands, gently lift and fold each side of the dough over itself. Flip the dough over, cover it, and let it rise for an hour. In the meantime, we are going to prepare the toppings. Let's start with the mushrooms. Pour enough foil to coat the bottom of the pan. Once it's hot, add a clove of garlic and sauté for a minute or two, being careful not to let it burn. Then add the cleaned and sliced mushrooms along with a pinch of salt. Mix everything together. Cover the pan and cook for about 10 minutes. After that, remove the lid and let the mushrooms finish cooking. If you are a mushroom fan, you'll definitely want to check out this video. Now, let's move on to the potatoes. Grate a couple of medium-sized potatoes and let them soak in cold water until you are ready to use them. For the sun-dried tomatoes, if you are going to use them, soak them in very hot, almost boiling water. This will soften them and help remove excess salt. Let's get back to our dough. With wet hands, lift and fold each side of the dough over itself. Fold the dough over itself. Oil the surface of the dough and also under it.
cover with a lid and let it rest for about 45 minutes. While it's resting, make sure to bring all your other ingredients to room temperature. This includes sauces, which you can prepare the day before, like pumpkin puree, zucchini cream. Check out this video if you haven't watched it yet. Please don't skip this ingredient. And basil cream, which will be my next upload. Cubed provola cheese, and mozzarella or similar plant-based alternatives. Add fresh herbs and arugula only after baking. In the meantime, pour a little oil into a pan and when it's hot, toss in small chunks of zucchini. Add a bit of salt. Mix well. And let them cook over medium heat until they soften, develop a deeper color and get slightly browned. This will take about 5 minutes. In the meantime, the dough should have doubled in size. Before proceeding, preheat the oven to 250 degrees Celsius. Coat your work surface with semolina or rice flour and turn the dough onto it. Sprinkle semolina on the surface and edges to prevent sticking. And start stretching the dough by pressing its sides first, then its center. Place one side of the dough on your arm, shake off the excess semolina and transfer the dough to the tray that you previously coated with olive oil, as shown in my videos. Stretch the dough to cover the bottom of the tray. If the dough doesn't stretch enough, let it rest for at least 15 minutes. Then stretch it again. Ensure the sides reach the edges of the tray and the surface is even, as shown in my other pizza videos. If you notice different backgrounds, objects or lighting in the clips, it's because I baked two different pizza on separate days to try various toppings. Now pay attention, since we are not using tomato sauce, it's important to generously spray water over the surface of the dough to prevent it from drying out and burning. Then drizzle a little extra virgin olive oil on top and around the sides. Bake for 15-20 minutes, depending on your oven, on the lowest rack or directly on the bottom of the oven. While the pizza is baking, drain the sun-dried tomatoes using a sieve to remove excess water and set them aside. Do the same with the potatoes. Then season them with extra virgin olive oil, pepper or rosemary and salt. Set them aside as well. Let's top the pizza. Italian Triumph A note to the flavors, colors and scents that symbolize Italy and transport you to a summer of dolce far niente. You have the chance to add a touch of basil cream here and there, not completely covering the surface of the pizza. 
then spread a layer of zucchini cream to coat the entire base. Sprinkle a few pine nuts where you placed the basil cream, followed by some cherry tomatoes and mozzarella flakes. With a few shavings of cured cheese scattered here and there. For the other topping option, start with the mozzarella flakes on the zucchini cream. Then add sautéed zucchini and a few cherry tomatoes. If you prefer, you can replace the cherry tomatoes with sun-dried tomatoes, but without overdoing it. We'll add the herbs after baking. Potato perfection. They're basically good with almost 10 ingredients. Grated potatoes are thin, cook quickly, and absorb flavors fast. You can mix and match them with mozzarella, flaked cheese, provola cheese, or skip the cheese entirely and pair them with sautéed mushrooms or even sliced onions and other vegetables, just to name a few combinations. Bake for the last 5 minutes, placing the tray on the middle rack. Transfer it to a wire rack to cool for a bit. This is what the pizza looks like after baking. Just look at it, it's mouth-watering. Meanwhile, finish the toppings with a drizzle of basil cream and some fresh basil leaves or arugula for a classic Italian touch. For a potato perfection, add a rosemary and a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Prelude to Autumn A unique and infallible symphony of colors and flavors that captures the essence of the upcoming early fall season. Top your pizza with pumpkin puree. Sauté mushrooms. Cubes of provola cheese. And if you like, a sprinkle of pumpkin seeds. After baking, finish with a few fresh parsley leaves. So, what do you think of these topping ideas? I couldn't pick a favorite. They were all absolutely amazing. This recipe never let you down. The crust was soft and dairy. What's your take on this experiment? Is it pizza or still focaccia? Let me know in the comments. And tag me on Instagram if you give this recipe a try. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Subscribe to my channel. And hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.